bootcamp number 37 is how to neutralize English opening. So what is an English opening? I probably don't really need to explain a lot. It is what usually plays c4. I mean, not usually, but what plays c4. Um, but before we delve in to some variations and uh, what I would advise you to do, I would like to explain at least the way I treat why white is even doing this. And, and I think this is this is quite quite important. Why white is playing c4? Why white not is, is not playing um, uh, let's say knight of three or d4? And I'm talking about competitive level, right? Why let's say at competitive level, professional chess players they're playing c4 over knight of three over d4, etc. So one of the reasons is blacks potential response and this is quite common at at least at the professional level for example there is this very popular Grandfeld opening and uh, many strong players they're playing pretty much the same opening the same systems but the order of the moves really varies it's c4 or d4 knight of three and then he tries to find a hole in his opponent's preparation and um, choose according uh, to his opponent the best order of the moves so one of the typical ideas, for example, after d4, knight of 6, c4, there is this ever popular Grandfeld defense. Okay, you might ask, where's the difference, right? I mean, why are you telling me about uh, uh, about uh, the Grandfeld? But you're going to understand. Hello, Pepper, by the way. So the idea is that here, black typically he has the counterplay on the pawn on d4 so something like e4 knight c3 b takes c5 bishop g7 knight c6 etc 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 so one of the reasons why some experienced players have started to explore c4 uh since they're checking that their opponent is not playing e5 the central edged approach uh, let's say i'm playing uh knight f6 knight c3 g6 sort of again the ground fault but it's not really the same right here for example after knight of three d5 c x knight x in d5 you'll quickly notice that something is different and white has not played d4 so for example uh g3 bishop g7 bishop g2 castle castle white keeps an option to play d3 and avoiding playing d4 and play it sort of in the spirit of, uh, I mean, in the spirit of the English opening, and this is called the anti-Grandfeld. So it's just one of the one of one of the reasons why C4 is uh, really a popular choice by players who are often playing their main opening as uh, D4. So for example, another idea, I'm playing the let's say I'm playing the black and playing a Catalan. So I'm playing e6, g3, d5. This is my approach with black. Knight of 6, knight of 3, and white is not rushing with d4. So I play bishop e7, castle, castle, and now white keeps an option to play d4, the classical Catalan, having avoided some early variations, which involve d takes on c4. So what I'm talking about, if white would be playing in a different order than most, the classical way d4 knight of six c4 e6 knight of three d5 g3 it's not the same because black now he has access to bishop b4 check bishop e7 or bishop d6 which is more aggressive or try to snatch the pawn right away after d takes bishop g2 there's the aggressive knight c6 there's the aggressive a6 try to keep the pawn on c4 for as long as possible and thus, uh, it's not really so simple. So experienced players have started to explore this idea. They have started to play c4, and they simply skip all of these variations of e6, d5, d dx on c4. And for example, e6, g3, d5, bishop g2 here, here, d dx. Oh, uh, oh, thank you, Chess Dojo, for your raid. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank. You. How are you doing? I just uh, started my latest bootcamp. Thank you very much. I hope you had a wonderful stream. So here, one of the typical ideas for white is after queen f4 check, queen takes on c4. Again, white has not committed himself to d4. 
So that's the idea. I mean, it is speaking about English opening as such, maybe this may seem not very important, but it is, it is important. And I'm speaking from the perspective of a professional player and all my career, I've been changing the order and the moves against specific type of players. So if I see somebody plays, let's say the Grunfeld, I'm not playing d4c4, I'm playing c4, and I force him to play anti Grunfeld positions without d4. And then against somebody else, I start with knight f3, then switch to c4, and then I get the position which I want. I mean, assuming I have access to my opponent's uh, games. So, what to do here for black? I mean, here's the important thing. You can play pretty much anything you want. And uh, I, I think that it really makes sense that you are um, building your opening repertoire. And what I'm talking about opening repertoire, uh, this is something like a thing you're constantly playing against anybody. So let's say you're playing against pretty much any opening system, e6, d5. So, for example, here you can play something which suits against c4, which suits against d4, and which suits against knight f3. So, some of the most popular systems here for black is to play e6 and d5. So, you can pretty much do the same after d5. d4, d5, c4, e6, the queen's gambit declined, and then again you have a lot of options. There's the, there's the Catalan, there's the... Uh, the, the London version before, bishop before, uh, there's the knight c3 3 systems, so many, so many potential ways to play this. And if your opponent plays c4, you're still playing e6, d5, d takes, etc, etc, etc. But I have a belief myself that this is not really the way you should be playing against an English opening, because if we have a look at the English opening, what it really is, if he plays c4, e5, what it is, this is, uh, let me maybe switch the, uh, switch the board, this is essentially Sicilian. This is Sicilian with an extra tempo, and I, I recommend, I recommend to treat it like this, because I think, yeah, I think this is the most fun way to play, because you're playing it aggressively. But again, let me again underline, it really makes sense for you to play something which is based against c4, d4, and knight f3, because um, players by nature, they're a bit lazy, right? They don't want to study as many openings as possible. And that's why maybe something like e6, d5, or c6, d5, or the Queen's Indian, or the same Grunfeld, works against pretty much anything or dutch defense yeah, dutch defense by the way I've, I've played against c4 f5 myself so you can still play the dutch defense and uh, uh, most notably uh, the uh, leningrad dutch system but i do believe that e5 is is the most interesting way to continue against c4 and today i wanted to show you how to neutralize uh, the english opening um why is this because I'm confident that c4, e5 is the best move, is the best move there is, because after any single continuation, um, what is sort of pressing? Here, it's the most annoying continuation for what? And I know this, because I've played uh, the English opening from White's perspective, and one of my dreams, uh, my goals, usually from the White's perspective, was try to get knight f3 and c4. If not e4, d4, the first two moves, then I'm aiming for knight f3 and c4. And after every single move, there was something what I don't like. So after knight f3, I did not like d5. Knight f3, d5. Now after d4, I've early committed myself to knight f3, and there's some reasons why I don't like it. But if I now to switch to c4, there's d4. Every single move, every single move order has a drawback. The question is, does the opponent know this? I mean, okay, it's not so simple. Of course, the theory still continues. But after c4, my belief is that this is the drawback. Because black can play uh, c4, e5 and try to play for the advantage. Um, c4, e5 is not really compatible with 
any other uh, continuations, you cannot unfortunately switch from D4 or Knight F3 to the E5 systems. So this is a standalone. This is a standalone continuation, and, and this you have to understand, right? So this is from the lazy player's perspective, an extra opening that you'd need to study. So I do understand the people, right, who are playing E6, D5, and whatever. I don't care about English opening. I'm just playing my system. And I'm not paying nuance uh, attention to the nuances, and as long as I get out of the opening. But, like I said, I think we can afford to be a little bit ambitious. Um, in general, I think here, White has uh, four types of continuations. And this is, by the way, with a, which I mentioned in my chessable course. I'm not going to tell everything I mentioned in my chessable, uh, chessable course or the short and sweet. You can still find it. I more would like to explain the general philosophy of the C4 E5. So many people play the continuations and they're not even understanding <laughs> why they're playing. Uh, usually uh, the, the answer is, I was told, right? An expert told me or a book recommends this move, but I would like to explain why. So for example, do you have any idea why white includes knight c3 here so this is one of the uh, one of the most popular moves i mean maybe the most popular move the second move but do you know why so white obviously is trying to fight for the center a black's idea if nothing happens if nothing happens you want to play c6 d5 right you're fighting for the center and this sort of resembles to the Sicilian Alapin. So if you have some knowledge in the Sicilian Alapin, you can apply some knowledge uh, here. I mean, again, like I said, this is reverse Sicilian. And many of the knowledge, many of the knowledges that you have with the white color playing against Sicilian, you can apply here, although you're going to be here down a tempo. So for example, why knight c3 is necessary? Let's say, what, what I'm supposed to do here, I'm, I'm trying to fight for the center, right? I, I try to establish uh, a powerful pawn center, but this achieves nothing because d4 is not really great, right? d4 takes, if I take with a queen, there's going to be knight c6, there's going to be knight f6, there's going to be bishop b4, and the white queen is walking again. So what could try to take the center with e3 and then threaten to play d4. Now again, black's approach is really simple. We usually start with knight f6 and after d4, takes, takes, give a check on b4 and doesn't matter. Is he playing bishop d2 or knight c3, d5? And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's so simple. And uh, what is uh, usually forced to play with an isolated pawn either takes on d5 or something like knight f3 d takes bishop takes short castle and you have a very free uh and easy game yeah sort of like an exchange french actually by the way that's a very good point because i think this transposes to the uh traded uh, to the exchange french that's why nobody plays like this nobody plays like this because after knight f6 uh you want to either uh, grab the center with c6 d5 or maybe push d5 right away play it like sicilian but you are the white player now what else white can do here so there's various rare moves for example what can be very tricky he can try to do something like let's say b3 yeah by the way this move has some modest popularity maybe sometimes even starting with b3 bishop b2 and, and only then playing c4. And again, your game is very simple. So you play knight f6, bishop b2, and knight c6. And you want to play d5 next. Right? So it cannot be really difficult. And if white tries to be a bit challenging with a pawn on e5 and play something like knight f3, now here's the thing. One of the typical rules uh, for the a way to meet the English opening, you push for the pawn and you challenge the knight. So knight e4, I guess you can play something like bishop c5 or maybe even takes, takes, and just, just have an easy game. 
maybe bishop e7. But I think the most challenging donation indeed is bishop c5. Try to force white to take, take, short castle, rook e8. And again, black has a very easy game. I mean, it doesn't mean that this is not playable, but so slow continuations like b3, they don't really pose you any problems. There are some people who have been playing this as uh, reverse Sicilian and um, play it like the Nidorf. Yeah, especially this is uh, very popular in accelerated time control games. They're playing something like d3, but the idea is white is preparing to play knight f3 next so maybe actually i could even start with the move knight f3 why knight f3 itself is not so great and it's knight c3 it's the move e4 so this move usually uh, uh creates a white some annoyances so the knight cannot go to g5 attack the pawn because obviously it's under attack and after knight e4 we employ the same idea knight c6 right so take d takes again this is a very easy game and if white tries to play something like after knight c6 e3 you can simply take and if you are uh bored to investigate what other options do you have you can even play something like d5 c6 and simply get a very easy game again so again not really challenging thus uh, this should not be of a great concern and there's many there's many uh, side moves which white have tested they have played b3 they have played a3 they have played d3 uh, they have played knight f3 so like i said knight f3 it's e4 knight e4 knight c6 uh yeah maybe, yeah i think i mentioned already queen c2 about knight f3 again i think i already mentioned this is very simple you play knight c6 you force the trade and you're happy so the question is what should white do so one of the reasons is uh, why knight c3 is necessary. White makes the move knight f3 possible. Because after knight c3, we are going to play knight f6. We want to play actively in the center. And now knight f3 actually is possible. But I'm going to explain it a little later. Why knight f3 right now has become quite a popular continuation. Um, the classical choice here. Everybody, everybody plays, nobody really questions why. Why plays g3? Again, we have to understand why white is doing this. Why white is playing g3 and bishop g2? It's simply the lack of other choices. Because if white plays something like, let's imagine something like d4, again, it's a ridiculous move. d4 takes, takes, knight c6, bishop b4, d5, black very easily uh, continues development. White could try to grab the center with d3. And again, the simplest idea, what you can do, is to play d5. d5, c takes, knight e5, take on c3, bishop d6, that's it. You already have uh, taken the center, you have a healthy development, so white has not much to be happy about. So that's why white is playing g3. And uh, white is challenging. Uh, your center. So he wants to play moves like bishop g2 and quite typical to the English opening is to play moves like maybe d3 either e4 knight e2 or e3 knight g2 and try to expand at the queen side. Yeah, the control of the e4 and d5 square so the bishop usually for the English opening belongs to the uh, long diagonal. Um, so d5 is uh one way to go here but you know i think actually you have a very nice choice here so maybe i would like to explain you uh what what can you do here one of the biggest drawbacks for white uh playing knight c3 is the access to bishop b4 so bishop b4 your idea is you want a castle and you want to play rook e8 with the ability to play c6 and d5. So something like knight e5, it's not very dangerous, right? So takes, takes, c6 or d6, uh, doesn't really matter. Okay, I, I think it's c6, not to blunder the check on a4, c6, short castle, d6, very easy game. 
So if I play something like Bishop G2, Short Castle, Knight F3, you can already pick a number of continuations here. You can play D6, you can take on C3 and play D6, but the slightly more challenging continuation is Rook E8. And now the question is, if you're looking at this position, for those of you who have played the Sicilian Rosalimo, do you recognize what you're seeing here? So the position in question, I'm going to show you alternative position, is the Sicilian from White's perspective. G6, short castle, bishop G7, rook E1. Now do you see this? It's exactly the same, right? So here we have this position from the black's perspective. Here we have this position from the white's perspective. And one of the most typical ideas after knight f6 is e5, knight e5, knight c3. Um, this is taking, this is bad because usually black is having some weaknesses on d6. So you have to play knight c7, I take it, take it, and knight e4, d3, etc, 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 etc. So, <laughs> we look at this position and the question is, where's the difference? Where's really the difference? Uh, I mean, let me tell you, there is no difference. I mean, okay, there there is pretty much the difference of a tempo, but let's say uh, white castles, we are still playing e4. e4, knight e4, knight c6. This is still bad because, again, white will have some problems with the pawn on d3. And after knight c2, takes, takes, um, what was it? I think it was h6, d6, knight e5, and you get a very easy game. Right, So it cannot be really so difficult and you can apply the same knowledge, the same knowledge which you have against open Sicilians, you can do it yourself with black against c4e5 and you're playing very often in the same manner. So again, after, after uh, g3, bishop e4, I think this is by far the simplest setup. So again, bishop g2, short castle you won't play rook e8 but i think i it's fair to mention you don't really have to go for this you don't have to go for rook e8 and e4 this is the strongest i believe but you can play something like i don't know maybe d6 short castle and maybe even knight c6 yeah cannot be cannot be so a problematic ratio there's so many ways you can improvise although probably what is slightly aiming for this type of position So that's the reason, that is the reason why white has started to become really, really tricky about this. And he has explored other continuations here. And I'm going to tell you about them a little bit later. But one moment here about G3. There is one system which I think might work for everybody, the so-called old system and uh, gives black pretty much um, an easy game. So you, you can simply approach d5. And again, if you look at this position, it directly resembles to accelerate the dragon. So we have this position, and instead of the, after knight f3, g6, d4, c takes, knight x and d4, bishop g7, again, we have an accelerated dragon. So these ideas, are crossing from white to black, from black to white, etc, etc, etc. The only difference is, here, white is forcing the knight to leave the center. Yeah, that, that's, by the way, quite unfortunate, because we would like to manage to keep the knight on d5, and this is, by the way, a common mistake, so we have to retreat to b6, but if we play bishop e6, attack the knight, seems okay, Knight f3, knight c6, the pawn is under attack, needs to be protected. And the problem, the problem is the move d4. And white very quickly gets an advantage. So something like uh, takes, and I think it was, I think it was just takes, yeah. Um, takes, takes, and there's some difference. Takes queen takes and black has something hanging so it's a bit bit unpleasant i mean maybe 
maybe I don't really remember. Maybe it was also knight b5. And knight b5, the idea to recapture on d4 and black has slightly early a position the bishop on e6. So this is the reason why after bishop g2, the popular retreat is knight b6. So after knight b6, we want to play a bishop e7, short castle, knight c6, f6, bishop e6, etc. And then be very active in the center. So let me show you uh, some sample lines, let's say. Knight f3 makes perfect sense. Knight c6, short castle, bishop e7. And usually white tries to play something like this. D3, short castle, and A3. Yeah, one of the one of the most popular uh, continuations. So white is aiming sort of for B4, and uh, inviting you to play A5. I'm not a big fan of this move because it weakens the B5 square and it can very quickly backfire. So if I tries to do something like this, just play bishop e6 so you have very harmoniously paced pieces and after b4 the simplest move i think it's i think it's f6 yeah i'm already slightly rusty in this position but you want to play moves like queen d7 rook d8 and look for the right moment maybe to seek some counterplay at a queen side so maybe white technically gets some minor advantage but black's game is so easy and I was playing this uh, continuation for years. So again, if white plays g3, we are playing d5, c takes, knight takes, bishop g2. We cannot keep the knight on d5 because move like c6 would give up the fight for the center. So we are retreating here, knight c6, here, here. And normally we are aiming for this position. Feingold would give me a, the merit for playing f6. You know, actually, it's uh, there's some sidelines. For example, if I plays d3, short castle, a3, yeah, there's this move as well. I mean, this is definitely playable. Rook e8, a bishop f8, and knight e4. I mean, suit yourself. There, there's many, many continuations. For example, b4, um, I, think, I think it's possible already to play... I don't remember, but I think it was a5, b5, and knight e4. Yeah, I think so. And now after knight x on e5, this is the typical trick. So the knight on e5 is under attack, the knight on c3 is under attack. So you can also position the rook on e8 to play bishop f8 and maybe be a little bit more flexible with your ideas in the center. But I, I just like f6 because there's one reason. Yeah, by the way, there's one reason why well, I really, really like f6. So let me show you that. So we are going to this position. Castle, castle. Let's say uh, why well, plays something normal. Let's say... What was it? Okay, let's say a3, a5. I think it was bishop e3, bishop e6. Rook c1, f6, knight e4, and let's say. No, I slightly misplayed it. I think I think it was with the bishop on d2. I just want to show the position. Rook c1, queen d7, knight e4, f6. So this is one of the one of the reasons why I really like this position from Black's perspective. The idea is you are able to build the so-called Marozzi bind. So if white plays in the spirit of the dragon, again, we look at this position and it very much looks like Sicilian dragon. Hello, Alessia, how are we doing? So let's imagine white plays something, I don't know, let's say queen b1, threatened with b4 or something. We can play b6, rook goes away. And the idea is depending on... I'm not sure how I'm going to make it work. The idea is for us to push, uh, push c5 and knight c6. Okay, finally, with a queen on b1, I'm protecting the pawn on e4. So d4 actually is a great idea. Yeah, so I, I probably would need to make another ridiculous move. Let's say something like rook e1. b6, rook c1, and knight a7. 
and black wants to play c5, knight c6 and squeeze. Yeah, so this this is one of the one of the favorite ideas that black can do in this in this setup. Obviously, there's some theory, uh, but uh, the position is quite easy to play. Uh, the, there's some tricks. For example, if a white is quite tricky, and he plays something like d3. Now, after d3, this is interesting. White is waiting for you to play knight c6. Seemingly, it's the same, but after bishop takes, b takes, bishop e3, white doesn't rush with development of the kingside knight and instead starts to target your pawns at the queenside. And again, if we go back to the accelerated dragon, to this position, this idea is quite known. So, for example, I think it was here knight c6 and if you make an early knight i think it was knight b3 this is quite a common idea d6 bishop e6 rook c8 and knight e5 try to go after the pawns on c3 and c2 so the position pretty much repeats again with maybe slightly um not slightly but exactly mirroring the position from white to black so the good news is we don't have to do it. So we can simply play bishop e7. If white is slowing down, we are slowing down. We have some very good moves to make. And by the way, maybe black can consider himself immediately to play c5 and set up the Marozzi bind. So white cannot really afford to be super slow, right? Let's say short castle rook c1 i can already consider to play something like c5 c5 and after knight of three knight c6 so what gonna uh, postpone the development of the knight forever so i'm gonna start with bishop e7 d3 bishop e7 let's say bishop d2 castle and after knight of three i'm playing knight c6 i simply switch these lines so that's it but okay i mean probably you can include c5 a bit later and try to be ambitious so that is in the nutshell about about knight c3 so again knight c3 knight f6 you want to play d5 and white cannot easily stop it so after g3 you have a choice between bishop b4 bishop takes on c3 short castle and rook e8 for an easy game or you can be stubborn and play c uh, d5 c dx knight x on d5 and retreat with the knight on b6 so from the wise perspective what is thinking how i can improve this idea what should i do what about g3 and g3 is really interesting because g3 idea is not very obvious because now you don't have knight of six bishop g2 you don't have access to bishop b4 <laughs> it's simply a ridiculous move there's no knight so white's idea is to make uh, a different order in the move start with g3 bishop d2 and let's say you do something else let's say you do something else and you play let's say bishop e7 i don't know for whatever reason now he can play knight c3 because you have already committed yourself to bishop e7 or let's say g6 um there's some nuances we can push d5 and maybe for most of you this is going to be the simplest approach because it's exactly the same as with knight c3 so we go back slightly again knight c3 knight f6 g3 d5 takes takes bishop g2 knight b6 etc 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 very simple not really difficult so you already know the first 10 12 moves of the theory or you can play the same after g3 g3 knight f6 bishop g2 d5 c takes knight e5 but there is some nuances since white has not committed himself to knight c3 he does not have to do it 
so he can choose a better moment so we had this position with the knight on c3 but the bishop was standing here this is not exactly the same so white can try to play knight of three yes c6 d5 pits of rest, i'll mention i'll mention so after knight of three you cannot play e4 that would be a huge blunder right unfortunately this idea of e4 which was working for us earlier here with the c4 a c4 and c dex on d5 included unfortunately doesn't work for you so we want to play knight c6 and after the short castle you can still play knight b6 so nothing really changes about about this knight b6 why this is i think a bit tri uh, tricky is if you play bishop e7 hoping for your opponent to play knight c3 and then by the way we already uh no wait i think we can't play knight b6 yeah we still play knight b6 but your opponent can try to be very aggressive in the center and this is worse this is worse for black because the knight on d5 is under attack the pawn on g7 is under attack there's e4 there's knight c3 so white is simply enjoying a great a great center so pretty much the only move after e4 after d4 would be e4 knight e5 and maybe quite a difficult move not to lose the pawn on um the pawn on e4 is f5 so you want to take on e4 you want to play bishop e6 and have a very solid position and now the question is how to properly evaluate this position because black has the perfect knight on d5 but black has ruined pawn structure maybe somebody likes this position so queen can protect the pawn on c6 with queen d6 let's say something like queen c2 queen d6 uh knight c3 short castle bishop e6 still should be pretty simple but i mean it could be a bit a bit ugly at some point let's say takes takes you could lose the pawn on c7 and you would have to show what exactly do you have for it so that's why i think if you want to play d5 so we start with knight f6 bishop g2 d5 takes takes and after knight f3 knight c6 short castle by the way short castle is necessary because d4 you might rem remember a trick from the dragon is bishop b4 check so the the idea from the dragon again it it starts like this d6 d4 takes takes knight f6 knight c3 g6 bishop e3 and one of the typical ideas that knight g4 attacking the bishop here is just bad because of bishop b5 so you cannot play bishop d7 or knight d7 because you lose the knight on d4 so this is this is quite a quite a typical idea that what's gonna do it here so he castles and now you play knight b6 watching out for d4 and you still want to play bishop e7 short castle bishop e6 and f6 now how easy is this well what could try to be still tricky and because he has not positioned his knight on c3 he can try to do something else for example b3 after b3 again we can simply play bishop e7 bishop b2 f6 and d3 so with this order the moves white is slightly more tricky and gets the knight to d2 and not on c3 i mean this is a very big nuance now to be honest i don't think you should be overly concerned about so just something like a castle knight e2 you continue your idea with bishop e6 queen d7 a5 and again if possible you're looking for sort of a possibility to build the marozzi bind let's say queen d7 knight e4 a5 oh wait a5 allows d4 okay i think i need to be a bit more accurate okay i'm gonna start with rook d8 d4 is a problem knight c5 takes takes knight e5 and i want to play b6 knight a7 and c5 and this i've done many many times so it really works and you just need to be a bit sure that you're not missing 
any break those in the center with d4 or e4. So this setup is playable, but I do believe that because of white's early g3, there's something maybe slightly better. Um, again, it really it really depends depends on the on the on the player, right? Maybe somebody will say, okay, it's just enough against knight c3 and g3. I'm playing knight f6, d5, c takes knight. If I put the knight on b6, I understand the difference of white changing the ordered moves, uh, g3, bishop, g2, or knight c3. But there is a more ambitious approach, and again, it directly resembles to a Sicilian opening, one of them, which is the Sicilian Alapin, c6. So we remove g3, and this is a clean Sicilian Alapin. And while it is sort of enjoying the extra tempo of g3, yeah, so if y plays something like, again, knight f3, we simply play e4, and we simply play d5. And that's it. Again, we get a very simple game. Nothing really to worry about. If y plays bishop g2, again, we play d5. d5, c takes, c takes, and if d4, then e4. Very simple development. Cannot be a problem. So maybe there's some tricks, and uh, this is quite popular, uh, that White is trying to stop this, and he plays something like d4. d4, e4. Now we still want to push d5, and White tries to push forward playing d5, cutting you access from the pawn on e4. And here there's several continuations which you can do, but the simplest of them all so that you're not even worried about what is happening next is bishop b4 and queen e7 and the pawn on e4 is never falling for example here take take knight f6 bishop g2 castle let's say knight c3 mm, wait maybe i mixed it up <laughs> the point was to get this position yeah, maybe I should have included CDX and D5 earlier. Oh, oh wait, wait, I completely mixed it up. Bishop B4. Ah, oh, wait, it was Queen E7, my mistake. My mistake. Queen E7. Yeah, Queen E7, Bishop G2, Knight of 6. And then we simply make a castle, C takes, take on D2, play D6, a Bishop 5, and get an easy position. I'm, I forgot it. Yeah, it's, it's Queen E7. Is queen e7 protecting the pawn on e4 and the queen is ready to defend the bishop on, on b4. Yeah, so this, this trick. By the way, very simple. You don't need to know much. E, e4, d5, bishop b4, any move. Any move. You're playing queen e7. So it, it might be even knight e2. You're playing queen e7. You're thinking about the e3 ideas here. And even this, nothing really changes. So you can play d6 here knight f6 something like this takes takes castle bishop f5 rook e8 again super simple am i following tata steel no no do i look like i'm following tata steel i'm not following for tata steel should i right um again after c6 what can white really do and you'll see that many of the lines are highly transpositional. So after knight c3, d5, c takes, c takes, d4, e4, doesn't really change anything. White could try to play maybe bishop g2, d5, d4, e4. And probably white is interested uh, to keep the pawn on c6 and the pawn on c4 as long as he can to stop black to play knight c6. But this is quite ambitious. And if you would play a couple of games, you would see that this is really simple and you don't need to know much. This is considered to be stronger. So black is postponing the idea to play knight f6. And by the way, I think this is slightly inaccuracy. If you start with, let's say, let's say you're doing like, you're doing like this, let's say after c4, for whatever reason, you're playing, let's say knight f6. And after g3, okay, you decide to switch uh, to the um, English opening. And after bishop g2, you decide to switch to c6. 
And this is not really the same because you commit yourself to the knight on f6. So I could do here knight, I think it is knight c3, d5, d4, e4. And there is an extra problem because your opponent keeps the option to pin the knight. It could be a bit unpleasant. I mean, you are going to easily mix up the moments when bishop g5 is a threat, when bishop g5 is not a threat. So the, really the simplest is not to rush with this move. So after c4, e5, g3, c6, bishop g2, d5, and Paul very nicely said in chat that the pawns on d5 and e4 blunt the bishop on g2. So what could be very tricky and not to put the bishop on g2? Maybe something like, I'd say knight c3, d5, d4, e4, and maybe start with something like knight h3, I mean, cannot cannot be cannot be a problem. So try to play moves like bishop b4, knight of six, short castle. Keep the pawn on d5 intact, and you always will have uh, just a uh, just a simple game. Obviously, the tier is much much bigger, right? But if you're asking for a simple setup to play, this is how the elite is playing it right now. They're playing after g3 with c6. And again, it's quite important to understand why they're doing this. Why they're doing this? Because after knight of six, bishop g2, d5, I already explained to you is that white is not really obliged to play knight c3. And this position, white has some more extras. But then again, for you, it's really simple. Maybe at their level, 27 congress, 28 congress, this is really important. Uh, uh, tricky order the moves, how to get something out of the opening. But at the highest level, people have discovered that c6 is the way to go against g3. And white has played here really many ways. For example, one of the uh, one of the trickiest combinations you might remember a candidate's feed candidates match between Anish Giri against uh, Alexander Grishuk. And I think he played, I'll try to remember from memory, knight of 3 e4, knight e4 d5, c takes, queen takes, knight c2, knight of 6. So black is playing actively in the center, um, knight c3, queen e5, bishop g2, knight a6, short castle, and bishop e7. Yeah, and lately there were some interesting ideas in this variation, but after knight e3, Giri was going after the pawn on e4, you can simply play short castle. So Grishuk played h5. h5, h4 looked for some crazy lines. But short castle, queen c2, and knight c5, black simply defends everything. So again, b4, knight e6, the pawn is under attack, but white loses the access to the pawn on b4. Again, really, really simple. There's a couple of maybe nuances that the black needs to know. Uh, knight f3 is quite a popular way how white is trying to extract something. Uh, bishop g2 early is facing this pawn and something like d4, e4, it's not really doing great. So black again has a lot of freedom. So we go back. We go back to the starting position. And now you understand why g3 uh, people have started to explore why knight c3 some people don't like to play again let me remind you that after knight c3 knight f6 blacks one of the most annoying ideas is to early play bishop b4 bishop takes on c3 directly resembling to the sicilian rosalimo and that's why it's been quite popular here for white to explore developing the other knight. To explore the other knight, white plays knight f3. Now, where's the difference? Uh, you might go back. We might go back to the starting position. Why? Why did not play knight f3 right away? Because there's e4, right? There's no knight g5. And after knight e4, knight c6, okay, this is nothing for white. There's absolutely nothing. Something like e3, takes, takes, fight for the center, easy game. But white starts with knight c3. 
and after knight c3, knight f6, knight f3. And there's a major difference. After e4, there's knight g5. And suddenly this pawn is under attack. So you cannot do this. I mean, there is one gambit, but if you're looking for a funny way to surprise your opponent, there's the so-called Bellon Gambit. I'm not sure if you've seen it. This is very fun. <laughs> and uh, if Y doesn't know this, he could get in a lot of trouble, especially in Axel or the time control games. So the idea is that Black wants to take the pawn on C4, give away this pawn. For example, let's say C takes, D5, and H6 next. And this knight has nowhere to go. For example, D3, H6. You have to go away here. And I think it was... I don't remember. I think there was some big compensation. Something like A6. A6, D takes D4. So the game gets really sharp and and what is slightly struggling because of this knight on h3. So this gambit of b5, this is quite interesting, quite fun. Again, knight b5 is c6 and d5. Quite an amazing idea. And why is pushing away the knight? Yes, yes, Bellona is Anna Kromlik's dad. That's correct, that's correct. Uh, so the strongest move for white is actually d3. So white would have to know this. d3 takes and takes. Yeah, I think so. And here, black is sort of suffering this position. Yeah, so this not many know. Not many know this continuation. So exactly, d3, uh, take the pawn, take on b5. And now here, white is better. White is better because he has a better control of the center. This pawn is easily blocked on d5, but... Probably black is not losing on the spot. Oh, wait, did I mix up something? No, I th oh, maybe it was h6. I'm sorry. I think it was h6 and now d5. h6, d5, bishop d6. Yeah, I think it was like this. So it's not really, not really so bad. At least you're not losing. I mean, the gambit itself is surprised to be like a surprise weapon. So normally you cannot play e4. You cannot do this. So, of course, if white would play knight e4, knight c6, we happily get this position, which is very good for black. But there's knight g5. So that's the reason why white is starting with knight c3. He is fighting for this square. He's fighting for this square. And if black plays knight f6, white includes knight f3. And after knight c6, one of the most popular moves is g3. And now this is quite tricky. You might ask yourself, where's the difference? I mean, cannot I play bishop b4? Yeah, maybe you could take the knight on h3. Yeah, edge walker. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't argue. I don't remember, to be honest. I just, I'm just i just showing you these lines from memory. Now, the biggest difference, we go back to this position. You remember, right? I was telling you this is quite popular. Uh, bishop b4, bishop c3, castle, rook e8, c6, d5. Uh, very simple game. Now, where's the difference? The difference is this move now meets 95. And this 95, without including the knight development on c6 and the knight on f3, this was a shot in the empty air. Here it's something. This is actually a huge major theory, which is being played at the highest level. It's very difficult. So, naturally, we are not interested to take because the knight is forced to move. And we simply drop the pawn on, 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 uh, on e5. So, okay, maybe there's knight e4, but this is not a very good line. We could try to play e4 with the idea that white going to do this. This knight is under attack. And this is where theory starts. e4, knight h4, and... I think it was d6. Yeah, some some very crazy theory. There's some peace sacrifices, etc. I I never understood it. Never bothered to learn it. So this is really a nice way to meet bishop b4, because there's one of the major moves is knight e5. But there's good news for you. You can still switch to d5, and this is probably the simplest you can do. After d5, c takes. Knight e5, 
bishop g2 and you have some interesting modern options but again the simplest is to retreat with the knight on b6 those who have studied my chessable course they know i'm recommending something more modern but it's very um um a very uh based on 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 tactics so you need to know move by move what you're going gonna do there so i'm not gonna show you that i think this knight b6 is for the general audience maybe uh simpler to play so after knight b6 short castle bishop e7 again we reach the same positions uh, this is the so-called the so-called old theory which is still quite popular today so we want to play short castle we want to play bishop e6 f6 knight goes back and maybe he have this chance to build the marozzi bind by pushing away the rook b6 knight a7 and c5 i already showed you all of this um yeah so that's why that's why knight of three is uh so good and after g3 there's some other interesting continuations which have been quite popular lately it's 94 and this is by the way maybe an interesting idea for you those of you who are looking for alternatives uh, for some interesting variations now here knight x on e5 is a known mistake here and you couldn't go here because this is quite a funny mate on the board so you couldn't go there now white needs to play f4 d6 93 and i think it was bishop f5 and black develops a very strong initiative white can probably even play this but black is clearly on the driving seat so the best move is king of two <laughs> i think it already tells something from about this position so long castle h5 h4 black has a very very strong initiative so after g3 94 why well, doesn't really have a choice <laughs> he has to play here take and now you continue with bishop b4 and check this out your knight no longer is standing on c6 so this idea of 95 no longer concerns you and this idea of 94 this was for the longest time the most popular continuation against g3 system until white found something i don't remember what was it i think it was something like something like a castle castle maybe queen b3 but again i mean i cannot really imagine that you can have a lot of problems here like just play something like bishop c5 bishop c5 c6 d6 again you have you have a very very free um development yeah definitely you'll be able to re-watch the video on demand and i'm going to post it also on youtube uh so you'll see that you just uh you, you'll see that this is really really simple setup to play against the english opening much much easier than what you, maybe you're used to play um yeah maybe if you're looking for some variety it's quite interesting you can play bishop b4 right away and this is quite interesting uh this continuation has been quite popular and uh it's usually aimed against people who don't know how to respond against this early bishop b4 so for example let's say white plays the normal the standard way g3 he is unsuspecting what is happening here so you can simply take it b takes d6 bishop g2 and now i yeah, just play knight f6 or even f5 f5 knight f6 queen e7 or maybe f5 was too early okay maybe it was knight f6 and again you early eliminate the knight and the best move for white actually is to play knight d5 some sort of a reverse trompovsky yeah and um, those openings they're repeating all the time from white color from the black color mirrored variations etc so now after knight e5 i think it was bishop e7 d4 and d6 so this is quite quite reasonable continuation so white gets at some point 
is Bishop, but Black has a very easy game. So maybe somebody's gonna find it this to be even simpler, even simpler than a Knight of Six, Bishop G, uh, Bishop B4, Short Castle, Rook E8. You could play even Bishop B4, and then try to switch to some of those lines which I show you, but be a little bit more picky where you're gonna position your knight because maybe you could play f5 next but like i said the real drawback is knight e5 because white gets two bishops i think it was again bishop e7 d4 d6 i think it was knight f3 knight f6 if i remember correctly or maybe i don't remember correctly or maybe i don't remember correctly Ah, it's been a time. It's been a time when I've checked this. But this idea is quite quite tricky. I've been I've been uh, playing this against uh, with white color as well. Um. Yeah. So I mean, in in a nutshell, uh, this is this is pretty much it because there's not really so much to talk about. Let me maybe summarize what we just learned here. If white plays knight c3. We can play knight of six with the idea to early play a bishop e4, bishop takes on c3, short castle, or maybe uh, keep the option to take on c3 uh, for as long as possible. You don't have to rush with this, but you always have the option to go for the so called older setup after d5, knight e5, and put the knight on b6 with a very simple to play continuation. If white plays g3, he is escaping any bishop b4 ideas. You can still play knight of 6, d5, knight e5, but the idea here is that white is not committed himself to knight c3, and after castling short, he can try to be a little bit more picky with his continuations, but still, black is enjoying a very solid position. So again, really, really simple. If you are if you are looking towards to play like uh, some some of the best players in the world, know that lately it's very popular to play c6 and push d5. Any bishop g2 d5, any d4. Typically, the idea is to walk past it and push d5 yourself. So if white tries to stop it, you play bishop b4, queen e7, knight f6, and again enjoy a very simple development. What else there is? So finally, we have the knight c3, knight f6, and knight f3. And remember, if white wants to play knight f3, he needs to include knight c3. Otherwise, there's going to be e4. e4, and the knight cannot go to g5. Here, e4, knight g5 is a problem. Because the knight stands on f6, the queen is not guarding the g5 square. So that's why we can't play knight c6. And after the most popular, g3, you can still go to the old system. After knight e, uh, d4, d5, knight e5, bishop g2, again we go knight b6. Knight b6, bishop e7, short castle. And uh, yeah, have a, have a easy, easy game. So obviously there's some nuances, some um, rare continuations. Um, um, Pizza Racer is asking, can you play uh, d3 and knight e2? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. But any other continuations which don't challenge your center give you a lot of freedom how you can continue your development here. For example, d3, knight f6, I want to play d5. White could try to switch to the knight of, maybe I didn't show this, by the way. I didn't show this. After knight f3, we can play knight c6 or if you have some knowledge from the sicilian mask operation i go back here e4 c5 knight of three d6 bishop e5 does it ring a bell you can do exactly the same cannot be a big problem you can play bishop e4 check give away the bishop knight e2 and play something like d6 now how difficult is this really again White can try to win the bishop, takes, takes, short castle, 
and just continue normal development and you're never gonna experience any problems but of course you can be a little bit ambitious so the question is do you really want to get out of the opening or you want to be a little bit more ambitious and you're fighting for something more than equality because the topic of of our bootcamp number 37 is how to neutralize the English opening so we can play knight c6 and now it really depends what black is gonna do he can play the Nidorf the knight of colors reversed so we are gonna still play d5 c takes 95 simplest idea again to remove the knight to b6 short castle that'll be super difficult white can play some sort of a dragon reversed and again we are playing the same d5 95 bishop g2 bishop e7 maybe the only nuance here and this is maybe going to be a bit more complicated white has committed to d3 not sure if you remember that line but now after knight c3 you don't have to retreat you can play bishop e6 and that is the difference because this position is essentially what we're aiming for we want remember we are playing knight b6 then we play bishop e7 bishop e6 and then we go back with the knight to d5 here the knight remains and i told you before the reasoning why immediately bishop e6 keeping the knight on d5 was not working because it was d4 the immediate d to d4 here what has wasted a tempo on d3 and that's why it does not work the difference is a whole tempo and that's a huge difference so any sicilian uh reverse sicilian approaches from white they're interesting but they're not causing you any trouble and you are very much free to choose what do you want you can play like in the in the style of the sicilian moscow anti anti nidorf bishop b bishop b4 check trade away the bishop and play d6 you can be a bit more ambitious play knight c6 and d5 play it very center based um what did i forget probably not much really e3 d4 i told you knight c3 i told you knight f3 i told you um and g3 which is also quite an interesting system where you can choose between c6 d5 and knight f6 d5 i told you all right i think in a very fast sweeping um example a very fast sweeping uh, uh, explanation i think i told you everything thank you digital hubba now do you have any questions do you have any any questions about um um some of the positions maybe maybe one of the one of the most important uh, most important positions you're going to face is this one knight c3 knight f6 g3 and if you are not playing this bishop b4 and bishop c3 if you are playing against everything the same system so this is probably quite crucial just remember don't play knight c6 if your opponent is postponing knight f3 remember this idea to sacrifice the bishop on c6 and play against these weaknesses recognize this idea um black's best response e4 in your line is to play e4 that is the black's best response so for example knight f3 knight c6 short castle bishop e7 oh by the way by the way i completely forgot uh, there is one trick i would like to show you and i've beaten some very good players like this sometimes you can try to confuse your opponent and let's say your opponent plays d3 i mean this is d3 or a3 doesn't matter there is one very funny way how you can try to surprise your opponent right away it's not very good but it's difficult it's difficult for white to find the best response and it's g5 it looks crazy but if white is not suspecting how he's supposed to answer this let's say he's playing something normal like bishop e3 g4 
knight goes away h5 very early checkmate idea so this threat of h4 maybe bring the queen queen h5 suddenly white is under a direct attack so it's quite funny and uh, i played a couple of times with good results but unfortunately it's not a good idea hello mamlo yeah like Keras attack unfortunately it's not a good idea there is a direct refutation no there is a direct refutation but it's a good 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 thing that you notice now white needs to know d4 And the same position can arise with a3, a3, g5, and now d4. If I take knight b5, this pawn is under attack, bishop f6, and unfortunately, there's bishop g5. <laughs> and the entire idea collapses. Yeah, so it's not really so great. Bishop g5, knight g5, you don't really have great choices. Take, knight c7, here, takes, 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 takes. Oh, what collapses? Oh, what, what, what collects absolutely everything? So don't do this. Uh, so this is really balancing with the loss. But I've played it in some rapid games, even against Grandmasters. <laughs> and they didn't know how to respond immediately. Allowed me to play g4, h5, h4. And I, I managed to get a great game. And then somebody tried to play this against me. With the black color, I was playing this time with white. <laughs> and naturally, I knew this time that d4, knight b5, bishop g5 is uh, very dangerous. Yeah, I, I won both games, by the way, with white and black. With white and black. One guy was about, uh, one, one player was a grandmaster, the other one was FM level. So, I mean, they know how to play. Uh, but maybe we can slightly focus a bit more on these types of positions. Like I said, your plan typically is to play bishop e6, f6. And uh, after a3, I mentioned, don't rush with a5, because you could experience some discomfort of this weakness on, on b5. So the simplest is bishop e6. Let's say something like b4. And there is one typical moment when you're looking for this counter strike to play a5. a5 b5 and knight d4 because the pawn on e5 usually cannot be taken there's some tactics bishop f6 this i already showed you in a different version and after f4 take there are some problems for white so this you can try to remember and i think that you don't really need to stop white's b4 it's like in the Sicilian opening, right? Black wants to play b5 in the Sicilian Nidorf or any other Sicilians. Are you thinking, should I, to, should I try to stop it prematurely with a4 or allow it to happen so that I can try to destroy it by pushing a4? And here it's exactly the same. We are allowing white to play b4 so that there's a5. b5, not e4, trade away this guy here and then protect the pawn on b7. So really simple. There is one trick though. After knight e2, white protects the pawn on b3. There's one mistake which you should know, and this is very, very common. Never play knight e5. This is a huge mistake. It's so commonly made, and it unfortunately is a bad idea. Takes, takes, and e3. After knight e6, e4. <laughs> so this is this is a very old trap. Don't get here. So if your opponent does something like this, so you're playing the traditional way, you allow him to play b4, you're playing a5, b5, knight e4, he plays knight e2 and he wants to play e3, and this knight e2 is a very typical idea of the English opening, you can just play whatever move you want, really. You can play c6, which is fine. You can play queen d7. I guess c6 is the simplest move. c6, b takes, knight c6. And then you want to play knight e5 next again for a very active game. Maybe something like rook b1. Um, maybe a4. a4, 
you keep the ideas to play knight a5, knight b3. This pawn on b7 is weak, but then again, you control so many squares to the queen side. So many squares. Right, those bishops on e6 and e7, um, they're, they're very active. So this is one trick, yeah, by the way, which I should mention. But then again, if you're not really feeling comfortable, you don't have to push a5. Yeah, you can, by the way, play knight e4 right away. The same idea, knight e5, bishop f6. If he plays knight e2, attacking the pawn. I think you can play c6. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. c6, queen d7, let's say bishop b2. White is thinking about e3 going after the pawn on e5. And seek your counterplay here. Cannot be very bad. Um, sometimes white is trying trying to be a bit tricky with moves that like a3 or rook b1 again we are simply playing short castle b4 and the same idea bishop e6 so b5 knight e4 this is not working for white here and here so white gonna do this right white gonna simply do this so the absence of the tempo doesn't really play any role again d3 we play a5 or knight e4, whichever you like more, and then you play knight e4. Again, knight e5 is going to be bishop f6. Really, really simple. So, I'm not sure even what is the, what's the trick here. Maybe something like bishop e2 again. Ah, bishop e2 is knight c4. So, one of the, one of the trickiest systems, right, I think you can do is something like d3, short castle, and bishop e3. Again, this uh, resembles to the, um, so this uh, accelerated the uh, dragon bishop e6 maybe something like rook c1 if white plays d4 this is not dangerous d4 there's mass trades trade 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 c6 black is enjoying a very healthy position not a problem so usually he plays something like rook c1 and maybe queen d7 knight e4 Let's say a rook d8 to keep the uh, keep guard of this square here takes takes. And by the way, maybe we already managed to play ourselves the position without f6. Because why we are playing f6? I didn't mention this. Why we are playing f6? Usually we are stopping knight g5 from happening. But if you can find a way to save a tempo for f6, you can do this. So let's say here, here here something like here yeah maybe you can even save the tempo for f6 just play queen d7 queen d7 uh, you want to play knight e5 next if he plays knight g5 so b takes takes and probably the simplest one is trade this bishop here again you have very solid control of the queen side Any questions? Yeah, and this, this, by the way, this system you're going to reach from uh, from several order of the moves. It's going to be g3, bishop g2, d5, c takes knight e5, knight c3, knight c6. Just remember to include knight b6 so that there is no d4. The system you can reach from knight c3, knight f6, g3, d5, c takes knight e5, bishop g2, knight b6. And etc 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 with all those nuances of not allowing y to take on c6 and the system you can reach after knight c3 knight f6 knight f3 knight c6 and g3 bishop g2 knight b6 short castle bishop e7 so again i think i think from everything i show to you this by far is the simplest this is the simplest i honestly told you what is the strongest i told you what is the strongest so if y plays if y plays uh g3 i think this is the strongest because we are not really fighting for equality we're fighting for more and i'm playing this like sicilian rosalino against g3 i told you i believe this the strongest is c6 and maybe you're gonna like it i do recommend them 
Yeah, there's much, much more, of course. I do recommend it. But I'm also showing you this idea of 95, 96, which is not in the chessable course. It, it is not there. Maybe, maybe I vaguely mentioned this. It's the older theory, but maybe for you it's uh, just easier. Just easier. If you're looking for something really simple and don't, you don't want to investigate the theory seriously, because a chessable course is a complete repertoire. Right? It's for people who like to study. I mean, it's not for people who would like to build their weapon against the English opening in like in one hour. <laughs> it's not going to work like that. It's people who want to investigate, who want to play like the best players in the world. For them, I've written this complete repertoire and it's really good, really good. There's much, much more than that, obviously. There's a couple of things which I did not mention in purpose because all of that is in the, in the chessable course, right? I would not reveal all of those secrets here. I'm just telling the directions, which is very popular right now. Most of it is in the chessable course and much, 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 much war, uh, more. But for, for the players, like I said, who want to investigate as less time as possible, this D5, 95, 9B6 is the simplest way to go. Uh, have I shown, hello Parmaj Destroyer, have I shown lines for black to prevent eventual c5? Where do you get c5? Can you tell me uh, how do you get uh, the c5 system? Yeah, I'm recommending, I'm recommending c4e5. c4e5. And... This system is really, really simple. So you might, you might see the difference. I mean, again, let me, let us compare. Let us compare. And I told you honestly in the beginning, you could be playing one system against knight c, uh, against um, d4, against knight f3, against c4. It could be e6, d5. It could be Slav, c6, d5. It could be Gronfeld, knight of 6, g6, d5. But I, I just think that e5 is much, much more fun and, and more interesting. It's slightly a standalone continuation, which does not mix together with knight of 3. It does not mix together with d4. It's specifically against c4. There's so many people who like to play c4. What do I think about knight c6 f5? Oh, it's fun. I don't know. Haven't really played much. Let's say knight c3, knight f6, g3, f5. Yeah, this is absolutely playable. Uh, very interesting. But I think you also need to understand where you're going to position the bishop here. Is it b4 and take on c3? Or is it g6, bishop g7? So alternative, I was playing this line for many years in my childhood. I was playing this. I was playing this. G3, G6. Sort of the um, the closed system. After Bishop G2, Bishop G7, D3, D6. Uh, what has so many ways to continue here? For example, uh, Rook B1 with the idea to play B4, F5. Um, oh, wait, must it, maybe it was A5. A5, A3, F5, B4, takes, takes, knight F6, B5 here. And there's the knight on E2, there's knight F3. But about these positions, what I what I don't like is that I think white's game is more straightforward. Because white plays something like, um, uh, what was it? Something like, oh wait, H6. White plays something like queen b3, and he tries to make this plan work. c5, knight e2, knight c4, take on d6, and play bishop a3. And I've been playing this for many years. And this idea of g5, f4, g4, knight f5, h5, h4, essentially, the feeling is I'm trying to checkmate my opponent with a couple of pawns. And... Some good lever players, they're, they're, they don't know this. They play bishop b2, rook a1, they penetrate a file, etc. So again, how did it happen? Let's go back. c4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, g3, g6. Yeah, I was playing this. 
here, here, d3, d6. There's many, many order of the moves. I have no idea, again, which is the most precise. Um, I think it's quite tricky for, for white to uh, postpone knight of three, start with rook b1, b4, b5, because this is one of the typical ideas in the uh, English opening. The pawn structure is like a sign showing you direction where you should be uh, pushing your pawns. So, wait. b4, takes, takes. Castle, b5, knight e7. Again, knight of three. Maybe there's idea of knight h5, f4, etc. But usually, white's play at the at a queen side is more real. So again, I probably I can try to cook up some variations. Let's say this. Um, knight g6, rook a1, takes, takes, and I try to checkmate, and I try to do this, and here, and uh, he goes here, there's bishop b7, queen e7, and here, and even if I get to the pawn on g3, it's just a pawn. So that, that was my observation. That was my observation at the time, and I realized it's so much, so much simpler to play this from white, and a couple of times I actually... I, I try to play this uh, from from the wise perspective. So that's why I'm not a fan. Maybe there's some a bit more aggressive ways to play f5, but it really depends on the order of the moves, because white can play, for example, knight f3. And the question is, can you really play f5? d4, e4, d5. I think there was such a line even. Takes, takes. Oh, to be honest, I don't remember. Is there any other way to play aggressively against English? Yeah, that is, by the way, a good question. Um, I've been playing the Dutch defense my entire life. And um, it works like a charm against players who are not playing d4. <laughs> so I was, I was playing c4, f5, because d4, f5, this was one of my uh, main continuations. So white plays knight c3, knight f6. If he plays d4, I switch to the Dutch defense. But if you don't play the Dutch defense, don't do this, obviously. So he plays g3, I play e5. He plays bishop g2, I just play bishop e7. Uh, knight f3, d6. Again, very easy system. Castle, castle. Um, d4 is going to be e4. d3. I think it was queen e8, queen h5, f4. I start to checkmate. So easy. Again, white tries to do something here. Pretend like there's nothing. Queen h5, a b4. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it was... I think it's highly, uh, it's highly uh, possible you can improvise quite a lot. c6, a4, f4. Try to push here, here, here. <laughs> and everything goes to the mate. So that, that's how I played it a couple of times against uh, c4, f5. But of course, you don't have to do this. You can also continue to play it like, like uh, g6, bishop g7, d6, and eventually e5. Switch this uh, closed English, which I showed to you. But here, you don't really have to find cat of the bishop. You can position it elsewhere. Maybe here, actually. Bishop b4... Um, I don't know. Knight of three takes, takes, and d6. This already feels like a huge achievement. So, short castle, uh, queen e8, queen h5, f4, bishop h3. <laughs> Try to checkmate. And by the way, this idea of queen e8, queen h5 is very typical. Very typical for the Dutch defense. For black early, uh, any for early d5 is good for at least equality. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So I, I really I really believe that this is the most aggressive way to play. And if white tries to stop it with knight f3, unfortunately, we cannot switch to the e5 systems. Because the pawn on e5 is under attack, and now after c4, there's d4. Why is it good to take on c3? Hello, Kieluno. Which, which moment are you talking about? c4, e ah, you're talking about this moment. Um, oh wait, I was telling you about a Dutch. C4, f5, knight c3, knight f6, g3, e5, bishop g2, bishop b4, this one, right? Um, 
the bishop here doesn't do much because after d6 you're jumping under some queen a4 ideas white wants to expand at at the queen side anyway so one of the most typical ideas is you give away your bishop for the knight to get a better control of the center and you might remember i was saying that this is quite popular here as well after knight c3 knight of six g3 bishop b4 uh, bishop b4 bishop g2 castle knight of three rook e8 eventually you are taking on c3 because this bishop here is not doing anything and the white knight is fighting for the center i very briefly mentioned this line e4 knight e4 knight c6 and after knight c2 now since white is applying quite a serious pressure against the pawn on e4 that's why we trade it and then we play something active in the center with d5 again the idea is d5 queen d5 queen h5 bishop h3 and simply uh, go for the checkmate so this this is a very very common idea to eliminate this uh, uh, english knight on c3 and then just have more flexibility in the center don't be overly focused on um, uh, some two advanced stuff like the two bishops because i believe it's really really difficult to use it properly just focus on your um, peace development the ultra symmetrical line produced some interesting lively positions for black no why not you mean c4 c5 i just i just don't play this if you're talking about c4 c5 there is something this is something i played myself extensively with white just i just i just don't play this i just don't think it's fun so there's this old system with knight c3 g3 bishop g2 i think black still needs to prove can he call this but i was playing myself quite a lot with white uh these systems with knight of three knight c6 and early d4 against knight c6 d4 c takes knight e4 knight of six knight c3 um what was it e6 and this old line with g3 yeah g3 bishop g2 i remember uh we were analyzing with some of my students uh so many years ago this line this was quite popular the old Korchner line but um I was I was a big fan of d4 when I was playing this from the white's perspective but probably black is just doing fine so you really need to answer yourself the question um what is your repertoire if you don't have any if you don't mind learning new lines you can learn c4 e5 and follow the ideas which i recommended to you if you have something very solid are you playing let's say e6 d5 or c6 d5 you can pretty much ignore it right because you can't play against english you can't play against d4 you can't play against knight of three the same system but there's always going to be some nuances it's just i believe that after c4 e5 uh, black doesn't have to fight for equality you can fight for more 